Hi, John here. Um, today is Wednesday, Wednesday, the 5th of, is it Wednesday? Thursday, sorry. Thursday, the 5th of January 2017. I'm just uh, posting a few documents on Facebook, um, quite a bit, to update uh, information for the hui up in Waitangi Marae on Waitangi Day, 6th of February. We're going up there on the 3rd of February and having meetings with the chiefs and Kingi Taurua chief uh, before the 4th and on the 4th we'll be having other meetings as well in Titi Marae. On the 21st of January, uh, we're having a meeting in Pangaru. I'll be attending for the um, Taumata Komatua's uh, meeting and Whakamininga. Uh, so I've spoken to Bundy, Waitai, up there in Kaikui, and told him I'm going. I wasn't going to, but I'm going. I'm taking a bag full of titles and information that you see on Facebook. Uh, today, last night, and questionable. If anybody's got any questions, now's your time to do it. Okay, I just forewarn you that what I put online is admissible in the High Court of Admiralty in London and here in New Zealand courts. Just to say I won my case in the Auckland District Court because of videos that I run like this, making statements. It's up to you to make a video yourself in the flesh and blood with your voice and your face making statements that you believe are true and for anybody to say it's not true. So what you see there in the titles, the Manukau Land Company titles in Glasgow, Scotland, is real. And whatever I'm saying is those titles, not my title. It's those titles that I'm talking to, the Kafaru title on One Tree Hill and also the Manukau titles uh, that I'm talking to and the Moai titles that I'm talking to wrapped up together, okay? So I'm not uh, really speaking for anybody's land. I'm speaking for the King's Bench Court as a surrogate of what the King says in commercial contracts, okay? Get that straight. I'm here online as administrator of the native lands itself, what's stuck on it, and the documents, legal documents that are um, instruments used as the king's prize positions um, in laws. Okay, so that's, I, I just want to ring. Uh, Jim Tupi Wikotu and um, I always do this because I stick their name to the documents and make it public. Yeah, Jim, it's John Wanoa here. Um, I'm going up to the hui up in uh, Pangaru, um, and so I thought I'd let you know that uh, if you would go uh, to come up here and we go together, okay? So that's that's all I ring you for. Let me know, ring me, because I want to make arrangements and everything before then. I spoke to Bundy up there and told him I'm coming. So I'm coming to the hui. I think it's very important at this stage because uh, you have uh, other other uh, people that are going to turn up as well as the Maori government, Sunakura. I think the ones from Maniapoto. They're all going to be there, and I think it's fitting if we're there at the same time to uh, make statements um, in front of each other before. Um, Waitangi Day. Uh, I won't be getting the hall 
and because it's booked out in Paihia, so I'm going to take the tent up on the 3rd and uh, stay in that if the marae is not open on the 3rd of um, uh, February. If so, we'll stay in the marae, but I'll, I'll put the tent up and have some hui in there uh, on the 3rd and on the 4th inside to Te Marae. Okay, so that's all I want to say, uh, Jim. Give me a call back and let me know what you are thinking, please. There, that's Jim. <clears throat> I'm making these videos because they are admissible evidence in the High Court of Admiralty in London for a start and also in the Auckland District Court here where I won my case against the CIB police. Detective Natalie Flowerdoon Brown and those landowners on Cook Street. You're in a spot of bother, bother legally now that I've got this lot and the flag behind me, um, not alone in this. I could carry on ahead by myself, but I prefer not to. I prefer to do it in front of the chiefs, like as always, all my documents and all my statements are made from Marae. Okay, so those people in Pangaru, I'll be there and, and um, face the fact that um, um, Kingi and I walked out of Whirinaki uh, Hui because of what was said to Kingi affected me because both our names are on the documents, the legal documents of commercial contract as commercial landowners gone to Westminster. Parliament and the Prime Minister of uh, Britain, Theresa May, which has gone to the um, Secretary of Defence, uh, Michael Fallon, and it's gone to the Chief of the Navy and Military, uh, Sir um, Philip Jones. Okay, so they're notified of our intent to bill charge debtor, the New Zealand Government, and the Maori um, iwi authorities on the Crown, New Zealand Company and Queen Elizabeth Monarch Sovereign Title Holdings contracts. Okay? So we are coming from the King's Bench Court contract, commercial contract between the Chief Tira Waikato Wharaherehere Manukau under the Manukau Land Company Scotland titles, jurisdiction of Admiralty of King William IV over these lands, the whole of New Zealand. Right? The Manukau Land Company seized all the New Zealand Company, New South Wales, New Zealand Government Company's titles and reissued them under martial law at the time. Okay? That's Captain Clendon, James Reddy Clendon, proclaimed the land belongs to the King. Once you say that, once the ship's captain uh, on HMS ships says the land belongs to the King of England, that's the title that I'm talking about here inside the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Native Court. Waitangi Marae King's Bench Native Court. Hearing? We have two parts of the flag, the 1835 Declaration of Independence flag, 1835, and the New Zealand Government um, crown. That date, 1835, 20th, 28th of October, and the Government of New Zealand legislated that flag out. So it's got had no mana right up to the 15th of April 2016 when Chief King Itaurua and myself as Sheriff and King William IV Surrogate Captain of our ship <coughs> proclaimed the land belongs to the Chiefs Hapu, Whakamininga and not the King of England or the Queen of England. Okay, so that's gone down as legal in front of him and I and Hoepa Ebiar Eping and 
Willy Peter Komar Tours on this buoy that I'm going to, hopefully with Jim Wikopu again, uh, in Pangaru. So that was legal. We legalized the flag under the Moai Crown, King William the Fourth Trust, and the Fakamininga Native Surname Chiefs. Okay, I make that point clear on this video that your surname has to be male dominant to fit a King's Bench Court title to any native land on the documents, instruments of legal authority. Okay, they're just instruments, they're not the land, it's the instruments that Chief Kingi Taurua is a commercial contract landowner. Okay, we're not talking about a native landowner because there's no such thing as a native landowner. Okay, there's only crown landowners and freehold landowners under a crown of some sort. So the Maori are under the Queen's Bench Court Crown Authority Vice Admiral. And the Moai is a memorial statue standing with King William IV memorial statue, Crown Corporate Admiralty title, straight admiral. Okay? Straight admiral title. So in this case, Captain James Reddy Clendon was a surrogate king, the same as what I'm proclaiming to be, and writing it that way, a surrogate king William IV to speak for him in his absence on behalf of the native surname chiefs. Okay, so you've got a group there at the Hui calling themselves Whakaminia. Now that's an 1835 Whakaminia. They can call themselves that because the Whakaminia is still the same flag but two parts, a British part and a New South Wales part. They're talking to the New South Wales part of that flag. It's secondary or inferior to the 1834 Clendon title. Okay, straight from England. As soon as he opened his mouth and said, he proclaims the land belongs to the king. He already had the legal instrument documents of deed title to the land that was pre-sold by one Tira Waikato Whareherehere Manikau in Cambridge, England. Okay, you got that one? That's why Mohi Manikau stand there laughing at everybody all these years in Waitangi Marae and Titi Marae knowing what happened, okay? He knew what happened and shut his mouth and says nothing because no one was listening to him. And he just did the karakias for the ratana, you see? So the ratana followed their own pathways in commerce, okay? So so did King Tohetia in Tainui. They're, they're quite welcome to run their own business in commercial contracts whether it's with the Queen or the King, is irrelevant as far as we're concerned as native chiefs, surnames. Okay, so the old names that the British picked was the Parapara and the Manukau surnames on their titles. Okay, so the Maui name was a Wano name anyway with the Maui statue that they stole in 1868, you see. That period, 1868, was when America lost its sovereignty. It lost its sovereignty to Britain. Right on that date, Topaz picked the Maui statue up, the first Maui to leave that island under Admiralty Court Martial Law of King William IV. Okay, that was Queen Victoria that stole it for its mana, Fenua title. Okay, so that's the title I'm going on. That one belongs to all you Ngāpuis, Tainui, Ngāti Pro, 
and Arawa, everyone belongs to the Maui statue right through the world. Okay, all the indigenous people of the world have their own memorial pythons, either whether it's stone or whether it's wood. The stone seems to have outlasted the wood. But that carving I put there, that Moai, Mohi found, or, or Pakia found, in the Kaipa Harbour and gave it to him, is the title and a parliament set up by the Tupunas and they hid it in the sand on the beach till such time as it was found and used. That carving that I've put there today, it's been there for a long time, but nobody notices. They don't know one carving to another if you don't know its history. It was made way back in Kafaru time. In fact, it's the Kafaru period of time of his chieftainship that that carving came out. I've got all that history in the Kaipara here from Mohi Manukau. We did all the history in six years. We put it all together. All these things you see online have come out of his head, not my head. It's come out of his head and the other chiefs, Hare Ototonga, Machi Tarawa, uh, Richard Kake, uh, and uh, Dalwihilni, and all, all those all those old people who have gone, have dropped the whole lot on my head. And I don't want it anymore. I want to give it back to you when you know what it means. And the flag, no one seems to have cottoned on what it really means. It's a commercial contract. That belongs to the British, that flag. Its symbols, its red cross, is Vatican. That's what Mohi Manaka was, Freemason. Fifty years Freemason, you see. He was right at that level. And I went right to that level, and still at that level, to talk in Westminster about all of this that's online. So if anybody's got any problems about what I say, you better put it on my Facebook site so everybody can see because they're witnessing everything I say is either true or untrue. Well, it is for anybody to say it's not true. I see comments, but I want more than just the comment. I want something in writing there, right there, or a video of yourself saying something in front of the videos I've got there because videos are very strong. And they tell the message straight from your mouth, whether you're a teacher or not like me, it still comes out as raw and in flesh and blood yourself saying statements that are true if no one says anything. You see? So that's what I use in courts now. Just the video, not documents. I don't have to use documents, but it backs up the documents. In case I make mistakes on documents, are easy to make mistakes in one word, but not a video. What you say goes. My word against yours. End of quote. Right? If you can't answer, it's because you have insufficient evidence. That's what I won my case on. The court said the police had insufficient evidence. You know why? Because I got too much online. And what the judge said, when my barrister asked him, John wants to say something in the court and then the judge says there's no need it's all on YouTube end of case you see, that end of the case he said I find you innocent John Wanoa and then the police gets on their feet and opens the case up in a new contract after he shut it down I should have said Oh, well, I'm out of here. I'm going now. See you. Thank you. But I didn't. I want to see what they were going to do next to catch them committing the fraud. Now I've got all that evidence online, right in front of you, that even Natalie Flower Dune Brown, detective, can't get out of. She, they took her out to the Solomon Islands and hid her there. So I won't get her while she's back now. And guess what? She's going into court with a bound note on her trillion pound note on her head and every other person that got in the way and tampered with the information that I put online. 
Okay, those landowners on Cook Street, I can do this on my own and seize the land, but I prefer to go through the chiefs. Okay, the chiefs on the Maori side and the chiefs on the Moai side. So far, I've got four chiefs on the Moai side. That's really, really good. Even four is enough. If John Key can go and talk for every New Zealander, sell this country out, and get away with it, then leave, the same way as Obama, make it all war, and then leave for the next one to pick up, then that's what John Key did. He's liable, you're, you're liable, John Key, on this video and all the other videos. I'm accusing you of Panama Paper fraud, tax evasion fraud, and corruption and treason. Okay? This is what this court hearing's all about. And everyone is joined up or third party to your fraud back to the Queen Elizabeth's fraud to Rothschild's bank funny money fraud and uh, that money dollar American dollar fiat money fraud scam and cabals Illuminati Zionist UN IMF NATO all of those private companies using King William the Fourth Admiralty Court Martial Law is in trouble. When we have a court hearing with the real native surname, Chiefs. We'll go right through the world. That's why I'm taking my time in this month to prepare for a hearing of all hearings in the world. That's the most powerful court in the world, the most powerful native Land court in the world is Waitangi Marae King's Bench Native Court because it's got a ship of Admiralty beside it with the mast on with our flag, the 1834 Whakaminina flag, and the British flag opposite, and the Union Jack 1902 flag on the top. The Australian Union Jack 1901 is the other ship in the sea flag off the land in the sea. Admiralty in the sea. You wonder why John Key wanted to change the flag. He did a lot of bad things by trying to put a football flag there in the fern to take a flag of war, Union Jack flag off as if it was nothing. It cost you, John Key. It cost you. You got a trillion pound on your head plus one billion trillion pound note on your head. That's already been given to you by email and you've acknowledged that you received it by email. Okay, it's online, everybody see. And also the 970 million trillion trillion pound note against the Queen, the Rothschild banks, <coughs> Church and State, Vatican City, City of London, these are private companies, Washington DC, US Federal State, Illuminati, Cabells, IMF, <coughs> New Zealand Government, Intuition New Zealand Limited Companies of the Crown Corporation New Zealand, <coughs> Queen Elizabeth II, private company, Buckingham Palace, private company, <coughs> And the 300 royal families, Bank of England, owned by the Rothschilds, Rothschild families, Evelyn Rothschild, okay, those people get the 970 million trillion trillion pound notes. And all the gold in Philippines belongs to the Queen Victoria Trust, gets a bill. We are the beneficiaries of that trust in this Whakameninga. The original surname, natives, not Maori. There was no Maori in 1830 to 1837 to 1945. There was no Maoris. There was only native indigenous. Hapu. Chiefs. We put the Maui statue memorial besides 
those chiefs. Right? It belongs to them. In fact, it belongs to everywhere in the world where it's gone, where the Queen and her royal family took it and placed it in New York, Washington, D.C., Brussels, London, France, New Zealand, South Island, Dunedin, and Auckland City, North Island, New Zealand. You see? You see why they did that? They did that for a good reason, to take the native titles all over the world. So that's what this video is for. It's just to update that. I'll try Jim again. I want to see if I can get him. When you're in business, your phone has to ring and answer. There's got to be someone to answer a phone. Now there, he's already got the message. But that's what I mean. Someone should be answering the phone. My phone's always on all the time. And or by email or <coughs> Facebook. Okay, so that's really what I wanted to say. But I'm just run through on the uh, Facebook site. I've just put up uh, the hidden facts of Littlewood Treaty that will sink the New Zealand government and its corrupted Maori title treaty documents for legal information there was no such tribe as Maori in 1830 to 1840 through to 1945 when Maori first appeared on Maori land court titles. So Maori, Moai Crown, King William, four surrogate king, that's myself, and the Whakamanua Grand Jury will open this case to the indigenous countries of the world effect, affected by what we say as Moai Tahitian commercial landowners and not Pākehā Māori Iwi Fraud Landowner Trustees. Are you listening? I will drop the original titles in front of Prime Minister Bill English and the New Zealand Navy Chief as third party trustees, now facing the British Navy Chief's first party to the Maui Crown King William IV Trust and its Whakamininga native Hapu Indigene male dominant surname chiefs and Grand Jury and Sheriff on the Waitangi Day, 6th of February 2017, as the second party. I meant to put that in as second party. Hold on a second. Hapu and the Mao Dominic Chiefs, second party. That's the trouble with documents. You can miss anything, but not not with a not when you say on a video. Okay, so um, so that's what I've just said. The captain of any British Navy ship proclaims under the King's Admiralty title any native lands of countries he alienates is the property prize possessions of the King of England in our period of time between 1830 and 1837, King William IV private contract of Admiralty Court Martial Law jurisdictions. The Littlewood Treaty linked New Zealand to America to its commercial landowner King William IV, King of England, Britain, UK at that time of our contract native chief and King William IV. So that's um, what I've put there, it's better to say it on the video. Uh, and from then I start dropping in um, a few um, documents of uh, title. I see there's, um, I'll read this out. I'll read what Kahi Harawera has said on my Facebook site. When you make comments on my Facebook site, they are actually admissible in the High Court of Admiralty in London. Now, you can't go there without an authority of mass protections and titles behind it, okay? So, no offence to you, Kahi. I know you've been watching me all along, but I know you're a Hatfield American surname by your 
Bachia, two books. Mine is Rogan, Judges, okay, in the Kuiper in Auckland. That's my Rogan Scottish land titles and English surname married into me, Wānoa. They went for Wānoa and Manukau land titles, you see? That's why I'm holding those two titles to that judge in Australia, Rogan, and the Rogan, same John Rogan, and another son Rogan, John Rogan, came to New Zealand and swiped all your titles off you, your New South Wales titles, with your iwi and Maori titles, and whipped them off you. Now, that's what's just about to happen. We're going to whip the whole lot off you again and reissue them to whoever. If it's a Maori government, they get it. You see, not my business. I don't, I, I don't need to know that. I'm just handled the pound note in the bank. The King Tafeo, Waikato Chiefs, pound note back to Tira Waikato, Whara Here Here, Manukau, in Mangatautui, Waikato.